Hey everyone, we're going to see how to use SQLite in a Go application. Um, so by the end of this, you should be able to use SQL uh, in any form, uh, whether that be MySQL, etc. But the focus of this particular tutorial is going to be around SQLite. Um, so we're going to start things off by creating a new project. Uh, I, the editor that I will be using is GoLand by JetBrains. Um, so let's go ahead and create a new project. And we're going to define where in our Go path we wish to create it. So I'm just going to call it SQL project. And I'm going to choose the SDK of Go that I wish to use. And I'm going to say create. So after it creates your project, we, we just basically have an empty directory. Uh, we need to go ahead and create a Go file. Um, this will be our main Go file and it'll be all, our only Go file for this particular project. So I'm going to say new Go file. I'm going to say that I want a simple application and I'm going to call it main.go. However, it doesn't really matter what you call it. And I'm going to say save or OK. So that'll leave you with the package main as well as a function main. Um, so this can bring us towards the next step of actually uh, using SQL uh, within our application. Um, so let's go ahead and, and go into the main function. We're going to import our dependencies as we go along. But the first step will be to open our database. So I'm going to say database. Um, I'm going to not worry about the errors for this example. I'm going to just going to assume that everything works out. And I'm going to say equals SQL.open. Now SQL.open uh, requires a few things. It requires, uh, first of all, you provided a driver. So we're going to say SQLite 3. And then the second parameter will be uh, what database are we going to be working with. And I'm going to say within our relative path, I'm going to work with a database called Enroboy. DB. And you'll notice that it imported a database uh, SQL import. Uh, this is great because this is kind of the base driver for using SQL with Go, but it's not our SQLite 3 driver. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to um, import one uh, based on uh, what's available online or create our own. Um, so it's, it's easier just to um, import one that exists. So I'm just going to change my import statements a bit. And I'm going to import the following. I'm going to import github.com and I'm going to import mat n slash go hyphen SQLite 3. So that's the import that we want to work with. Um, you'll notice that database is currently unused. Um, so the next step is well, we have an open database uh, potentially uh, and we want to prepare a SQL statement. So this is Let's just assume that we have a blank slate now. Uh, Enroboy.db does not exist, so we need to start from scratch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say statement. Again, we're not going to worry about the error. And we're going to say equals database.prepare. And this is where we provide our SQL query string. Um, so the SQL query string, since we have no database as of now, it might make sense to create a database. So we're going to say uh, and it doesn't really matter if you all capitalize it, um, but I'm going to do it so that way it's a little cleaner, I think. And this is all preference on the capitalization. But I'm going to say create table. I'm going to say if not exists, people. And for this people table, I'm going to have an ID. This is going to be an integer, and it's also going to be a primary key. I'm going to have a first name. Uh, it's going to be of type text. And I'm going to have a last name. And this is going to be of type text also. So a basic basic table to hold first names and last names. Nothing, nothing too complicated. So now that we have the statement, we need to actually execute it within our database. So what we can do is we can say statement.exec with no parameters passed in. And if I wanted to, I could save it. Uh, and it will go ahead and create it when I run it. So let's go ahead and run it. Make sure that there's no errors. We can go to run, and there is shortcuts for this, and then we'll just say run. I will say go build main, which will also run it. It ran it, no errors, all good. Uh, and we could keep running it because this is a create table if not exists. So uh, if it does exist, it'll just skip over it. So the next step is, well, we need to add some data. So let's go ahead and do another statement. So I'm gonna say statement. Again, I'm gonna skip over the error. And I'm gonna say database.prepare. Now, as far as the SQL statement goes, I'm going to say insert into people. And I'm going to say the first name as well as the last name, uh, because those are the two columns that I want to insert. And I'm going to say values. 
And I'm going to use two question marks because we want to use a uh, parameterized query. Uh, because in the event that our that our application gets a little more complex, we don't want any kind of SQL injection attacks from user data. So we're just going to use parameters in this case. So now that we have our statement, uh, we can work towards executing it. So again, we're going to say statement dot uh, x or execute or whatever you want to say that that abbreviation, um, and we're going to provide the arguments which are going to be representative of those question marks for our parameterized query. So in this case, I'm going to say Nick Raboy, and it's going to be in the same order that they appear in the, in the list of question marks. So after I execute it, uh, what I want to do is maybe I want to uh, query for that data. Or first of all, maybe let's save it and make sure that it still works. So I saved it. I click Run. Uh, looks, looks good so far. No errors. So the next step is, like I said, let's let's query this data. We have data in the database now. So what we're going to say is we're going to say uh, rows, which is our result set. We're going to skip over the error, and we're going to say database dot query, uh, since this is a uh, actual query now and not uh, just a statement. Uh, we're going to say select. We're going to say we want the ID, which is that primary key. We want the first name. We want the last name, uh, and we want to say from uh, the people table. Uh, and once we have the rows, uh, we can actually loop through it. Um, but before we loop through it, we need a place to store each of the columns that come back. Um, so let's create variables for that. And we could create a structure if we wanted to. Um, but this is a simple example, so variables work fine. So we're going to say var id. This is going to be of type int. We're going to say var first name, which is of type string. And we're going to say var last name, which is also of type string. All right, now we can actually loop through it. So we could say for, we can say rows.next. And for every row that exists, uh, we're going to say um, rows.scan. And we're going to store our columns for that row inside of our variable. So id, first name, last name and they, they have to appear in order the, the order that you selected them in um, that's how they match up uh, but we're going to select those three uh, and then all we're going to do is we're going to print it out so we're going to say fmt print line and we're going to say uh, we got to do some string conversion because we're working with a, an integer there so what we can say is we can say str convert we can say i to a we can pass in id um, we could fancy it up maybe we add a colon there uh, we can say first name, uh, we'll add a space character, we'll say last name, and uh, we'll save it. Now, I should already have uh, Nick Raboy in the database, and if you look at your, your project files, you'll, you'll notice that now we have a main.go file and an nraboy database file. That's because it was created in a previous run. Uh, so this time, let's go ahead and change it up. I'll say this one's going to be Maria Raboy, uh, and I'm going to run it and see what we get. So this time around, we got two records back. We got the Nick Raboy that we had that we had saved in a previous run, and we have Maria Raboy. So this is what we were able to access based on our query. Um, so now let's go ahead and, and maybe just add one more. I'll say uh, John Doe. Uh, this time around, instead of uh, ID and uh, first name, last name, we're going to scrap the, the last name. I'll comment it out. Uh, let's go ahead and remove it just to show that, hey, this works. Um, let's go ahead and save it. I'll run it. And this time around, our, our query changed. Uh, so the basis behind this, again, this is a SQLite tutorial. So the core material of what matters here is, one, we have the uh, core Go uh, SQL interface here. Uh, but then we have the actual SQLite 3 driver. And there's, there's quite a few SQLite 3 drivers uh, floating around GitHub. Um, this one, I think, had the most reviews. Um, so just import it and uh, add it as your driver name, and that'll be uh, the database that you work against. And in this case, I, I'm using my local path. Uh, so it wasn't too difficult. 